fertile yet harsh land made up of gently rolling hills interrupted by ravines and steep slopes which break up the landscape, inviting at the same time restraining travellers from disturbing the inhabitants. It would seem like an intrusion. This is how the Langa area near Asti first appears to visitors who are unaware of its history, its traditions and its simple but ancient culture. A land which is never the same, where the traveller's eye takes in the wide variety of colours depending on the season, as well as the continuously changing landscape. Ranging from the hilly countryside, where vineyards alternate with meadows and cultivated fields on the valley floor, to the typical Apennine scenery of the villages higher up, where woods and forests reign supreme. In this wonderful natural setting, 16 villages are gathered in an area that stretches from Piedmont to Liguria, including plains and the Apennine Mountains, the Langa area and the coast. The only mountain community office in the Asti province is located in Roccaverano, known as the Langa Astigiana Val Bormida. The harshness of the territory seems to emerge from its ancient name, Landa, which conveys the sense of a wild and uninhabited place. And yet this corner of Piedmont has been fought over for thousands of years, and its plains have witnessed the passage of invaders and colonizers from the early settlements of the Gauls and Celts up to Roman domination. History appears forcefully everywhere, with the presence of large churches, watchtowers, fortresses and castles, many in ruins, but more often still intact and imposing, some of them restored as memories of the far corners of this land and the patient, toiling hands of its inhabitants. The people are mostly agricultural workers, closely linked to the land, which they have patiently and lovingly reshaped, not without difficulty, turning it into gentle and friendly countryside. They used basic and ingenious techniques which have been perfected over time, and in spite of their simple tools, they have managed to enhance what nature has provided for those who know how to use it. Starting with the Langa stone, a type of sandstone which is much used in construction work, given its good appearance and its robustness. This type of stone is not extracted from quarries, but is recovered when working the agricultural land or by demolishing old buildings. It is relatively easy to work and aesthetically pleasing. So we see stone walls, farmhouses and castles built stone by stone, often using the dry technique, in other words without mortar, which requires special skill and care. Today this skill is being used once again, thanks in part to the growing number of tourists visiting the area. This has meant that more and more local people are now providing accommodation and farmhouse holidays, taking advantage of surroundings that are particularly suitable, and at the same time helping towards protecting their very special cultural and aesthetic identity. All these activities make it possible to keep a link between the present and the past, preserving as far as possible the natural environment and ensuring that the whole area maintains its attractive features.
And so today, in the Langa area, we come across extraordinary local characters who are apparently ageless. Just like their tenacious ancestors, they have spent their lives extracting and working the fine local stone. The handsome and solid buildings that they have put up with their own hands create harmonious surroundings that are a pleasure to the eye, much more so than the urban sprawl produced by complicated planning regulations in wealthier areas. Another feature which distinguishes the ancient craft tradition in the Langa area is woodworking. Today's woodworkers, who should really be called artists, owe everything to the skill of their predecessors, who took advantage of the surrounding forests, rich in precious wood, like walnut, oak, cherry, beech, chestnut, and learnt to carve and shape it with more and more refined techniques handed down from one generation to the next. Wood has always been used where flexible strength is required, such as for roof trusses and ceiling beams. Advanced techniques and the use of modern technology have obviously made their work quicker and more complicated. But alongside the normal industrial processes, cutting and shaping, etc., the skilled hand of a human being is still the only way of turning the raw material into the elegant shape created by the craft worker's skill and imagination. A well-known woodworking application is the local Piedmont chair, as well as furniture based on the old Piedmont style. Objects constructed with state-of-the-art industrial methods, but produced in craft workshops which are able to make even the smallest item into a uniquely elegant artwork.
However, while industrial plants are helping towards the rebirth of the local economy, mass production is always accompanied by the human touch, which is so indispensable for ensuring quality. Legend has it that one day, many years ago, a wandering shepherd was about to cross a desert with his flock, and needing food for the journey, he put some milk into a bag made from a lamb's stomach. The rennet, which was naturally present in the bag, combined with the heat of the sun, caused the milk to separate into curds and whey. That's how cheese was first made, absolutely naturally, and since then the art of cheese making has spread all over the world. Cheese is mentioned in Indian sacred texts long before the Bible, and we know for sure that the ancient Shiite people were expert cheese makers. Pliny the Elder describes no less than 13 types of cheese produced in Roman times. Even Homer in the Odyssey recounts how the giant Polyphemus made cheese from sheep's milk. Throughout history this ideal and tasty food has spread everywhere. And the Langa area is no exception. There are traces of references to cheese making in rock graffiti dating as far back as 5000 BC. Today the Piedmont region has no less than nine cheeses with the DOP label denomination of protected origin. But only one of these, known as Robiola di Roccaverano, can be made with three different types of milk, cow, goat and sheep. It is a delicious soft cheese made with fresh milk from cows who are milked twice a day and fed on natural forage. And the cheese matures in a very short space of time, on average seven to ten days. The special quality of this cheese is due to the live fermenting agents which are present right up to the time when the cheese is eaten. The traditional process uses fresh, uncooked milk to ensure the best nutritional quality. The milk is heated to a temperature of 18 degrees and treated with natural liquid rennet. Then it is left to rest for 24 hours before being wrapped in plastic and left to rest for another day. After salting, maturation is completed in three days or it can be seasoned for longer periods. When it is seasoned, Robiola di Roccaverano takes on a slightly piquant taste and can be preserved under olive oil or immersed in sheep's milk or other special sauces. There are about 60 small and large companies in the Langa area which make this delicious cheese, all specialized in guaranteed and completely genuine methods to make a product that is widely known in Italy and abroad. Yet another example of the splendid traditions of the Langa area showing how deeply attached the people are to their land and its wide variety of natural products. Mm -hmm. 